we will start with our first speaker for the unpanel which is a series of 5 minute short lightning talks and that's arjun sinha arjun is a partner at ap partners and he advises a lot of clients in the technology sector who are looking to either build technology businesses or invest in them today arjun is going to be talking to us about the impact of misuse of personal data of voters on the integrity of the election process arjun over to you hi thanks so let's start this again right uh, i think whenever we think about technology in indian elections we always think about evms as the first thought that comes to mind but today i won't be dealing with that uh, i think i'll deal with one specific issue which is how technology and data impacts campaigns in indian elections now as you uh, all clearly know indian elections is a messy process we have about 2600 national parties out of which 60 are serious they collectively sent about 8040 candidates in the last general election who were trying to woo the vote of 900 million people eligible to vote all of this is expensive it took about just on plain uh, back of the envelope calculation about 60000 crores to achieve which i personally think would be a little higher and which makes deciding the political future of a billion plus people a messy and expensive and and as a result maintaining the integrity of this process is the most important condition for a healthy democracy now how does data and technology impact elections right let's imagine first a world without data and technology and let's assume me and my 11 twitter followers decide to that you know i should contest in the election now like a good delhi bengali i probably decide to contest from cr park and now i have to reach out to 30 lakh people in a short span of 45 days that's typically the time given to any elected representative trying to get elected either in an mla or an mp level i have to in this time reach out to at least 5 lakh people door to door put up a few hoardings which are at best 500 spots in the whole constituency send out a few pamphlets maybe do a tv ad or two so even if i want to spend all the money in the world i probably can't reach out to everyone if i throw data and technology in the mix right? um, and by data and technology i don't mean high end campaigns right i mean i just don't mean the political ad that we see it can be where i choose to go and do door to door campaigns because voter history and voting history will tell me exactly which pockets do people live in it can be the call that you receive because uh, or it can be just the information that you put out out there that tells me who you are and what you like so say for example people in my interested constituency like dogs right i know that there are lots of pet lovers and i can craft campaign messages specifically to each of those constituents so do you like dogs this is my message for you do you like cats this is my message for you uh, and this can be sent through an online video this can be sent through a phone call because i can overlay it with the phone information that i have on it it can be sent through a text or it can be sent through a message um and that's just what i can do or you know the political party that uh, i represent can do i can also do uh, influencer campaigns i can reach out to a dog group and say hey since i'm speaking for you why don't you guys do an ad for me or i can speak out to uh, the local online newspaper and say hey if i'm uh, standing why don't you do an ad for me and they run an ad which says basically we spoke to a small sample survey and they all think our chance going to win and the sample survey is basically me and five of my friends so the issue here that comes down to is is that none of this is a lot of this is often not illegal right it's all it's all a part of the rough and tumble of indian politics but what people do need to know is who paid for it whether what you are seeing is a genuine uh, interest of an individual a citizen the press or actually a political campaign so they need to know whether what you're viewing is paid for by somebody or it's actually just organic behavior second thing they need to do is if somebody is paid for it who's paid for it if for example i have taken you know a donation from somebody you need to know uh, who's paid for that donation simply because say if i'm saying that i'm pro dog in my campaign speeches but my primary donor is not so then in that situation uh, you my behavior after may be very different from what i'm telling you um the third is you also need to know uh, whether third party campaigns are actually reaching out to and who's paying for them because what you what you shouldn't happen is that what you, when you receive information you think it's genuine and bipartisan and independent information actually it's a campaign that's funded by me i'm not clear and the problem today in today's regulatory framework is that there aren't strong enough disincentives to allow for this strong transparency and by strong enough disincentives i mean if i don't disclose this information as a candidate my ticket should be at risk if parties don't disclose this information of who's paying for it what i have paid for 
uh, they should be at the risk of being named and penalized financially. Uh, at the, also, for example, people who encourage this behavior and participate in it shouldn't treat it like any other marketing campaign and disclose that you know they, that this was a political campaign. That this basic principle that uh, that applies in election law, which is governments in power should be reined in from using governmental resources. So, if all of you might remember Indira Gandhi getting disqualified, she got disqualified for using a government bungalow for a few days, right? Now, if we apply the same principle to data. Governments have a large amount of data on you that they can use in an election campaign from insidious to even legitimate means. Say, for example, I know a person who can influence a lot of voters and has a tax claim against them. You know, I could just give him a phone call and say, hey, uh, you might have a dispute against you if you don't swing the vote in my way. And that's, that's how I use sensitive government information in an election campaign. I can also use it by saying, hey, you get, basically went on and applied for this program and you got this benefit from me. Guess what? I'm now the party that brought you this program and got you this benefit. You should vote for me again. The information that you gave for a statutory purpose is now being used either against you or to influence you. And in the absence of a strong privacy law, uh, there are no purpose limitations and there are no very real consequences for these breaches or data transfers to happen. So to sum up, this is what we need, I think, in my personal opinion. Uh, we need greater transparency, and we need real consequences for people who don't maintain this transparency, whether it is parties, candidates, or people doing the campaigns. And second is what we need to do is we need to get, create a level playing field between the government and opposition in how they can use statutorily obtained data during an election campaign. That's, all, that's it for me.